I've always wanted to ask this question, and I'm, I'm going to uh, use my position to ask it quickly. When, when I was at your library, <laughs> that's not that bad, don't worry. <laughs> when I was at your library opening, I was standing in your replica office, Oval Office. It's an incredibly uh, powerful feeling. I've never been to the White House. I'm not a Republican, but uh, um, I looked at your desk, and I was wondering from president to president whether you pass a list along of, of secrets that only you and a couple of President Bush Sr., President Bush, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford know, like, where's Jimmy Hoffa? Or um, uh, what, what really happened at Roswell? So without, without, giving away, without giving away any state secrets, is there, is, there, is there something we can all look forward to in the future to read about that you know that we don't know that will really make the National Enquirer required reading? <laughs> I don't know if you all remember this, but there was actually, when I was president in my second term, there was an anniversary observance of Roswell. You remember that? Mm -hmm. People came to Roswell, New Mexico from all over the world. And, um, and there's also a site in Nevada where people were convinced that the, the government had buried a UFO and perhaps an alien deep underground because we wouldn't allow anybody to go there. And... Um, I can say now because it's now been released into the public domain. I, I actually, I had so many people in my own administration were convinced that Roswell was a fraud, but this place in Nevada was really serious. There was an alien <laughs> artifact there. So I actually sent somebody there to figure it out. <laughs> and it was actually just a secret defense installation, alas, and doing boring work that we just didn't want anybody else to see. So I can't think of that. Let me, I, I give you a serious thing though. I spent a lot of, in, in 2000, I was able to participate with Tony Blair and representatives of the French, German, Japanese, and Canadian governments in announcing that we had succeeded in sequencing the human genome. And perhaps some of you have investments in all these biotech companies. And now you know we, we cloned Dolly the sheep, and now apparently they may have cloned a dog. And we we're all talking about this. My own view is that assuming we don't do something stupid like burn ourselves up with global warming or blow ourselves up with a military conflict we could just as easily avoid, I think a lot of these biotechnology issues will be the dominant sort of intellectual and ethical challenges of the lives of those of you who are 10, 20, 30 years younger than I am. Um, because I think that we are going to be able to save people's lives that, you know, in my generation couldn't be saved. And we are going to come up against the limits of our own mortality in a way we never could before. And a lot of the things that happen, good and bad, will be stranger than anything ever written in science fiction. But I don't know the answers. For just one reason, I would like to live to be 100 just to see what happens. So that means there's a list or no list? <laughs> what? What did you say? I, just, I, said, I was just joking. The list, the, the, you should have said, I don't know what you said, but you should have said there's absolutely no risk of that. Given my misspent youth, I'm lucky to be here now. And what I did say was that there, there really is no list or there is a list. The, 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 the secrets. If there is one, I don't know it. I mean, I really, the, the Roswell thing, I think, really was an illusion. I don't think it happened. I mean, I think there are rational explanations that I have succeeded, and I, I did attempt to find out if there were any secret government documents that reveal things, and if there were, they were concealed from me too. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the first president that underlings have lied to or that career bureaucrats have waited out. But there may be some career person sitting around somewhere hiding these dark secrets even from elected presidents, but if so, they successfully eluded me. And I'm almost embarrassed to tell you I did try to find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that, uh, I do believe, by the way, I'll, I'll be just as one more flaky. That you can even also be flaky when you're out of office. <laughs> I believe that now that we know there are not hundreds, not millions, but billions of other solar systems out there, thanks to the Hubble telescope and what we know about black holes in the universe and all of that, the, the dimensions of physics are such that I would be quite surprised if in the lifetime of people that are 
no older than 30 here, we don't discover some form of life in another universe. It's pretty clear that there was something approaching elemental life on Mars at one time in the past, based on what we've already discovered there. So I say that only to say this. I hope all of you, wherever you live, will continue to support space exploration. Whether manned or unmanned is not so important, but we have to keep doing that. And I'm afraid that there will be a waning interest in it in the future. I think it's a great mistake. I think we should continue to explore the boundaries of our existence, both into the earth and beyond the skies. When I was president, we discovered in the bottom of the Amazon River, that we were just a small part of this, but two previously undiscovered forms of marine life so deep in the Amazon that nope, they had never been found and all the efforts of marine biologists. So I think there are lots of interesting discoveries, biological, on Earth, and other discoveries in the heavens that those of you who are younger will get to see unfold. You'll have all kinds of problems with them, but on balance it'll be a plus. And it'll make life much more interesting. Well, as usual, 90 Minutes with President Clinton is uh, never dull. It's a really wide range of subjects, and I thank you all very much for participating today. Please join me in welcoming the president, uh, thanking the president for his Thank you very speech. much. Thank you.